Uh, welcome back. Uh, this is the Saturday edition of the South African Morning. Uh, radioactive rhinos. Let me repeat that for you. Radioactive rhinos. Uh, researchers in South Africa, Australia and the U.S. are now investigating ways of devaluing rhino horns. It's such an important discussion. They're thinking of inserting radioactive material into the horns of rhino. Uh, they're hoping this is going to try and save the species from poachers. As you imagine, though, there's going to be quite a few people uh, jumping up and down about this. Let's Let's find out uh, the opinion of James Larkin from Wits University. Hello to you, James. Very well known, of course, uh, in the world of uh, conservation and ecotourism. It's, it's a pleasure speaking to you. Uh, James, so, uh, just speak to me about this radioactive material as a way of devaluing the rhino horn. Where's the idea come from? Has it gotten that bad? This is where we are now. Um, listen, you know, folk poaching has got that bad. You look at the reports from the sand parks themselves when they've lost 67 percent of their animals over the last 10 years um so the numbers are going down yes covid stopped poaching for a while but the numbers are going back up again so mm. yeah we've got to do something about it and i had this idea a number of years ago and worked on it for a while and then eventually got to the point where rather than it being a just an idea on a piece of paper. I took it to um, friends and colleagues of mine at Rosatom and I said, um, you know, are you interested? And they looked at the idea and they said, yes, they were very interested in um, mm -hmm. helping this project along. I'll tell you why I find this so interesting, because over the years, uh, many stories covering the fight, against and, uh, the fight against poaching and poachers. But in the end, you can take down as many poachers as you can fire a rifle at. The problem is it's still a highly marketable commodity. Take away the demand, you take away the supply, you take away the value behind this. I imagine that's where the thinking is behind this. That's part of the thinking is that um, if you take away the demand for rhino horn, then there's going to be less poaching. But the other, other string to this whole idea is that by putting a small quantity of radioactive material into the horn, you actually make the, if the horn is poached and taken by poachers and smugglers, it makes it a lot more detectable globally as these items are smuggled from one country to another. There are something like... 10,000 installed radiation monitors globally at various ports, harbours, border crossings, that sort of thing, which are all designed to detect radiation. This has all came about by an international effort to prevent um, terrorists acquiring and smuggling nuclear and radioactive material. So if we piggyback on the back of that, we then have if you like, another large army of people who are capable of um, stopping or capable of detecting mm. uh, rhino horn that has been smuggled one, from one part of the world to the other. Uh, because I'm the route on directly from sort of southern Africa to the Far East, mm. but they do go via various different um, parts of the world. And the, all of these parts of the world have these installed detectors, so this makes makes it a lot harder to smuggle the stuff and so we're trying to change the perception of the smugglers that actually this is not something they want to be involved in. I'm so glad that there's somebody else in the conservation who's starting to use the word uh, uh, terrorism and eco-terrorism as I think that's the kind of point we've reached now James. Uh, I agree with you as well. Let's, uh, in the last minute or two I have with you James, let's just obviously talk about uh, the health concerns around this. Uh, it's one thing to insert dye into a rhino horn that's been uh, removed. It's, it's quite something else to be doing uh, what, what, we, what we're talking about, radioactive material. Take me to the process. What are the health concerns uh, here, if any? Um, well, we are, we've started the first phases of this research. You've seen the pictures yesterday and today, if you like, of what we were doing there is putting in some stable material that, that isn't radioactive so we can make sure that there isn't movement from the horn to the animal. But what we will be doing in, in collaboration with our colleagues from the US, Australia, Russia, is to do what we call dose modeling in that we will do very detailed computer modeling and then back that up then with some work using what we call phantoms, which are sort of models of the rhino head, to make sure that the dose of the, the radioactive dose that these animals get 
will do no harm because that is the underlying principle is first do no harm to these animals you harm them what, what what's the point of doing the work mm. uh, I, I have about uh, a minute with you actually I thought I was running out of time so I, I'm, I'm looking forward to your response on this we're looking at some of the visuals of, of the rangers out in the field it's well known now isn't it James that you've got private uh, farmers who do have rhino in order to try and protect the species. One of the issues, though, is just geographically, the Kruger National Park, considering where it is in the country and it's so easy to access from the other borders, is a problem, uh, and it's such a vast area as well. Uh, what does the program look like as far as sand parks' involvement is concerned? Is that even uh, a possibility? Look, I, we never say never, I think, is the answer. Um, it would be, we would be delighted to work with Sam Parks to try and reduce the amount of poaching going on. Um, you know, my dream is to have a, all the rhino in the country with their horns. I mean, why, why didn't nature grow them on the end of the nose of a rhino? Um, the animal needs them. We don't need them. Mm. And, you know, if you want to sort of come down to hard tax and money, that's why people come to South Africa and some come to Southern Africa is for the privilege of seeing the big five. And who wants to see a rhino with, with, without a horn? You know, who wants to come and see the big four and a half, if you like it? Uh, and yeah, I, I, you have to commend all of the people who are doing the work in anti poaching. These guys do a significantly dangerous and very important job. Um, but we want to give them an additional tool to make that life easier so they can then concentrate their efforts on some of the other endangered species that yeah. my fellow mankind feels they need to um, use for various reasons. Yeah, let's hope it's always going to be a case of the big five, James Larkin, not the, uh, not the big four uh, in years to come. I appreciate you in speaking to us. James Larkin uh, from the University of Witwatersrand.